Hey friend, welcome to my channel, Kareen Alude, where we talk about everything and I'm Kareen Alude. If you're not yet part of the Friendship Circle, please be sure to like, subscribe, and join the Friendship Circle. If you're already part of the Friendship Circle, please be sure to turn on your notification bell so you can always know when I post a new upload. Now let's get into this video. So today I wanted to talk about corn, and you guys all know what corn stands for, but you guys know how we gotta be on YouTube, okay? <laughs> I did major in business and college, so Definitely when I took my marketing classes, you do learn that SEX does sell. In fact, it does intrigue people and anything you sell. It could be, shoot, the Bible probably would sell more if there was a lot of SEX in it. Okay, trust me, trust me. That's just how our brains are wired and advertisement know that and how in the comments people are basically saying, hey, it's not really sinister, they're just trying to make their sales. But what we're talking about here is a lot of times people are afraid to admit, especially if you're in the Christian community or whatever, when they've had a corn addiction, okay? I myself, I was introduced to corn at a very young age at elementary school and it was a group of girls I hung out with. One of them found a magazine and their dad's, you know, situation brought it to school and we were all like, we didn't know nothing about that, okay? I was, what, seven years old? I knew nothing about that, but we were watching and at that age, you really do think that, um, cause at that age too, those days, it was VHS tapes, which would be increasingly difficult for young girls to find, <laughs> but we all wanted to know what's the big deal and your parents would not talk to you about it. My uncle and my dad, when we came of age, and I already knew about it by then, but you know, when we came of age, I think I was 13 or 14, my mom was already gone, so my uncle was the one who got us a book on puberty and womanhood because they didn't know how to even have the conversation with me and my sister. So it was just like, hey, here's a book, read it. Hope you learned something from it. <laughs> it's not their fault. But especially if you in a Caribbean household or a, you know, Haitian household, how you learn about it is, hey, you have SEX, you're gonna be pushing a trolley. That's how they say it in Creole, they call it trolley. You're gonna be pushing a trolley on the side of the road, waiting for a bus with you and your child as a single mother. So that always put fear in our hearts that this is what comes from intercourse. And we would be single mothers pushing a trolley, waiting on the bus. That was the image we had. And we didn't know about contraceptives, protection, STDs, nothing like that. Like there was just, you had to learn that in school or from other friends or from movies. And you know, even now in my grown age, I still will not speak about these things with like my elders. It's, it's, it's still, that's just how it is. Until you like married, you in your house, you have a baby. And even then, even then, it's just a sign of respect. <laughs> but people don't admit it. But at a very young age, I was open to that. And I found myself growing a need to see those type of images and then discovering your body at a young age. No one tells you how things is gonna feel, etc. And it was very uncomfortable because there's also that guilt if you come from the church of, you know this is bad, everybody says it's bad, everybody says you're gonna go to hell for this and you know that you should wanna do it, but every time you wanna stop, you don't, and you're young, you don't understand all of this. And there's essentially no one to talk about because it was, no one to talk to about it because it was so taboo, it was so, you know, like, the only other people is your friends who don't know nothing either. That's why I encourage parents, if you're watching, it's always best that you remove that stigma from your kids. Because a lot of those girls, you know, experiences, I'm not just say, they were being touched already by family members and still wasn't comfortable to tell their parents. But all of us as young kids would know because we talk about it with each other and not know how to handle it. Some of them thought it was okay for a 19 year old, whether it was nine, 10 years old, to be in a relationship. They were in full blown relationships with 19 year olds. And at that age, we didn't know it was wrong. I look back at a lot of things that used to happen like even in high school, how we used to have these grown 26, 27 year olds come pick girls up, like they drive by the school after school and ask girls, hey, you wanna ride? And you know, he got a car, so girl, you hop in, he maybe offer you McDonald's. Next thing you know, you're in a relationship with him. Girls were getting pregnant by these men and no one really bad an eyelash, not even school administrators that would see this grown men pick up these kids. And that's how I was in the hood, okay? I don't know if you guys had the same experience, comment below, but 
that's how it was. And those girls, they weren't being fast. They weren't being that. They really didn't know better. Imagine when you were a kid, if you're an adult now, how your mind processed things. My mind processed things now way differently than when I was a kid. You know, like you see, you think you're grown. Literally, I thought I was grown. <laughs> Not, you know, I've always had, I say this, my, my family was, although my dad was very chill, he was a very chill dad, they were very present and active and my uncle would always you know drill the bible into us and stuff like that so we had a little bit more restraint but it was also very easy to get into that life and i found myself you know having my little magazines i was hiding from the home from my family and stuff like that until in school i had this experience in elementary school i brought a magazine to school and I was showing my friends in the bathroom and then the teacher walked in and guess what? <laughs> they not only had, what they call it, DCF? Yeah, at the time, child services came to the house or whatever to check out to see where I got it from because they didn't want to believe me when I said that, hey, I got it from friends. And you know, you're not gonna snitch and say which friends, even in elementary school, we knew not to snitch, but my family was furious, but no one gave me a talk after that either you know it was just like they rectified nobody got in trouble you know I was able to come back to school and whatever blah 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 I think I had ISS in school suspension for like a week for bringing it to school or whatever and that was that but it's not like no one sat down with me after that and explained anything and I think I was nine by then right I say this to say giving you guys this experience where how easy it is how easy it is even if you have a loving home for your child to be exposed to that and you not even know and the dangers of them being exposed to that without you knowing is that they start to take these dumb advice from their young friends who don't know better either and then older men manipulate the hormonal changes they're going through when they start to feel certain sensations no one's explaining to them grown men take advantage of that because they almost rely on you as a parent to not educate them right and it's not just grown men it's grown women too there's a lot of like high, when i went to high school there was a lot mm, i'll just say that I just say that there were some of these grown women teachers that be so close with those football players and those football players talked and even in middle school those women how many times we've seen that happen okay let's just leave it at that but little boys it's the same thing it's not just little girls you know and they don't understand so they're listening to their dumb friends that's telling them to go pump and dump and everything walk in and they get diseases they don't understand the sacredness of you know intimacy with someone you love it's just the act of how many women can i conquer how many women can i plant my seed in and they don't have the right understanding because when they do get the talk from their dad it's the same toxic ideology that they grew up with so i do think mothers shouldn't just let the fathers talk to the boys either but have like a mother's touch and stuff even with my brothers especially my youngest brother like I gave him the talk as a woman and he's respectful to women right he's not that way too yes you can get it from the men but as a woman's perspective teach your sons to women don't just say it's the dad's job but hey this is how you respect a woman this is how you grow in intimacy if you choose to do it this is how you respect them you don't go show pictures to your homeboys and cyber bully them you don't go and count how many you can get here's the illnesses you can get this is what it does to a woman emotionally this and that blah 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 but a lot of people don't take that kind of responsibility now I said corn is not your fault because as a child too I would try to stop I'd pray and I'd give and this is a disclaimer that this is a no way judgment to anyone in that industry I have a lot of sympathy I used to have back when my corn addiction was in its heaviest I had my favorite stars <laughs> I went as far as to follow them on Instagram. I was invested, like I would only watch these people, you know what I'm saying? And I would see, there's two documentaries on Netflix that's called Life After Corn, but you know, put a P in there. And it's Life After Corn Ends. And they opened my eyes a little bit. It is, they did show a lot. 
Uh, but I don't think the purpose of the documentary was to prevent you from watching. It was kind of to show you behind the scenes. And then just interviews I've watched. And in a Discord, we had ex-stars that would talk about the experiences it's so crazy guys how they get treated it's all glamorized on there that i think educated myself on the behind the scenes and the emotional toll and the mental illnesses the drugs that are in there it kind of turned me off when i'm watching now i'm not just watching to get off it's like you know if i were to watch <laughs> I would watch and see the person like, yeah, she's probably not enjoying this. Like there was a woman that was like, it took her all day to shoot a, a shoot that was in the rear end. And she just had to keep pumping herself up with substances to keep going. And at the end of the day, she was so sore. She just sat in a bucket of ice, like a tub of ice and just cried and cried and cried. And there was uh, Shelly Lubin also who passed away from addiction. She was one who actually got out and was trying to reform other women too and get them out. And she was just giving her experiences. She sadly succumbed to you know the substances, but it was a need to kind constantly be up to keep going. But when you're watching Shelly Lubin or something like that, she looked energetic. On, she was a real, she looked like she enjoyed you would never think that when she said she went home and cried and discussed because the guy would just pump his seed on her and then there go the director or whoever shooting throwing a, red ra a wet rag at her and she got to wipe it off and just when she gets home, her body's done for, she's this and she's crying in agony like I need to get out. And when you start to see that image, it kind of turns you off from seeing it, you know, and not just that, but not knowing who's watching you, creeps, murderers, child, you know, just watching you, especially certain genres that are problematic on there, like barely legal uh, teens. And then another thing that turned me off completely, I think that was when I was finally done with it and I walked away from it because it was a journey even in adulthood, you know, to get out of it. You'd go a long time <laughs> without watching and then, you know, it was when there was a scandal with a pastor in my community and he was sleeping with the young girls at the church that were not of age. And it was, a, you know, not a pastor of my church or anything like that, but a pastor in our, in our community. And while I was on the website looking for my fix, one of the videos with him and the girl just popped up. And I was like, wait, I thought these were all actors. I thought this was all, yo, this is an actual crime with actual, like, I didn't know what to do. I froze and I was like, oh my God, these sites have real life stuff. These girls in there were barely 15, but they didn't look it on camera. And I'm like, somebody's watching this and getting off to it. I was re post and I just was like I'm done and then when I went to research Cornhub Cornhub has like real assault that's on there you know and there's been lawsuits to take them down etc but they're not always all fake those amateur or the ones that where they show you they tying them up and they're fighting and people watch when the girl is crying or this or she look out of it and she's just have six seven men on her they're sometimes real stuff because the one with the man in my community it was three girls in there in that room with him you know what i'm saying and it would look like oh he had three girls but no they were literal girls you know what i'm saying so that really did it for me and i really was like you know this i don't even know how to talk about this and now i'll say if you're having a tough time with it don't be too hard on yourself god is not this god that says oh you're condemned to hell because they're all of this whatever that's not how my god works i talk about him all the time like that you got to understand what you're up against okay you're up against a world where every show every commercial every advertisement every song that's what they talk about like rap songs have from not just women but men from the dawn of the 90s, the late 90s, took a turn to such explicit, and they know what they're doing. There's no 
rapper, male or female, that's gonna say that 90% of their fan base are not children. They know what they're doing. They don't care. They're trying to make their money because they know this sells. Kids are so into this. When I was young, I was into those music. I was into it. No adult is going to listen to this stuff like that unless those adults are still stuck in that childish like state of mind. But I don't know how my spirit and energy feels listening to certain songs that's just talking about open it wide. What? They know what they're doing. And in those videos, they put all these colors, all these makeup. And then that's why I get annoyed when these women try to make it a body positivity thing or or it's kind of like, oh, parents need to uh, monitor what their kids watch. You know when they go to school, their parents are not there. You know the schools don't care. And you know kids are sneaky. And you know you're advertising to them. You know what your label is doing. You know it. But they wait till they're like, you know, in their 50s, 60s to try to change their life. Like somebody always bring that up with Jay-Z. Like, yes, he evolved because when we're young, you're money hungry. Now you're trying to change the narrative and talk about deeper stuff. But no one's taking accountability for the things they did when they were young. And this is what you're up against. You're up against the hottest songs that you hear on radio, on anything. This is what they're talking about. Shows, the hottest shows that everyone's watching always has a scene in there that I'm like, y'all just had to throw that in there. Y'all just had to sprinkle a little bit of this in there. Like you can never watch or listen to anything that's just productive. Instagram's the same thing, but Twitter is worse and they know who most Twitter users are. I wanna cancel people with bots and that promote this. And we have all these other things like, you know, uh, fans only that people are promoting heavy to make their money. So they have to post certain things a, a certain way or whatever, where the young mind, like I don't have no problem with adults doing what they do. You're an adult, do what you do. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a no judgment. I really sincerely do have friends that are in the industry. I made in my Discord, they spoke up or whatever, that are either out or still in or they're doing their genuine good people, you know? Not a lot of people, it's their choice. I'm not going against that. But for the community that's like, yo, I, I, they're beating themselves up constantly. Why can't I stop? Why can't this, da, 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 da. It's like, you don't even have to watch it to see something that brings it back into your mind to now you're at a point where you're craving it or you're dreaming about it and you're this. And let me tell you this, on a spiritual standpoint, everybody knows sex demons are the most difficult demons to release yourself and free yourself from. I always bring it up because I like to tell people from experience, a lot of people don't believe in God, a lot of people don't believe in spirits, energy, all of that stuff. So this is why I always bring up the fact that I'm from Haiti, we experience these things live, people turn into animals, things happen, this stuff is real, whether you wanna believe it or not, that's just the reality. There's spirits, there's demons, okay? So the sex demons in Haiti or whatever, they're the most difficult to rid yourself of because they're everywhere. It's very difficult. You know, and when they get on you, you'll find women that are just like they not just women, but men. It's like it's it's it enters them and they're OK to do whatever. If you ever watch a coin where you're like, dang, I watched this, but I could never do this. I don't know how sis got like 10, 20 men, you know, like the one I think her name was Houston 500. I don't know what her name was. It was either Houston or Texas or whatever but she's reformed now too but she was the one I'll find her name and put it in here that had over a world record of having 600 plus or was it 500 plus men in the same day just all taking turns they had like 30 seconds each on her and I was like I could never that was on after corn ends on Netflix, uh, you'll see that. And I was like, I could never, how? Like all those spirits, energies, transfers, demons, this and that. And then you're like, and I'm not saying that was the case for her, but these women don't see it that way. They don't, once you allow those spirits and energies to come into you, you'll do anything. You'll do anything and not see a problem. And even if they see a problem, it's like they're literally enchained in it. And I'm telling you, the only thing that could literally free you is God and really education to see how come in the corn industry, the S rate, deleting yourself, taking your own life is so high, even amongst men. The illnesses rate, the mental illnesses rate, 
how come it's so high? Start researching and once you know and then you start, like even with advertisements and subliminal messages, watch my video, I'll link it in the end cards. Once you can see it, now I see advertisements, I see shows, it don't impact me because I'm like, yo, I see what y'all doing here. Versus in the past, like they said, ignorance is bliss. You don't know, you can't see it, you just continue on. But now I see it and I understand and I'm like, yeah, I'm not, mm -mm. name of Jesus, I'm done with this. And it brings on a certain depression too. Like people don't talk about all the science of what watching and looking at these images constantly do to our brains. It literally shrink your brain. Like that's scientifically proven. Let's talk about it. It's an industry that destroys lives. It destroys unions. It destroys young girls, young men. A rate of men feeling like they can do whatever to women increases in countries where these type of advertisements are not banned. These type of shows are prevalent. And this is why a lot of people that's not in America or, you know, the West or whatever you call it, they don't like Western culture because they let anything, being a capitalist country, and I love capitalism, I, I must say we all benefit from it, but part of being in a capitalist country is people are gonna do whatever to make their bread. And if SEX sells to make our bread, we're gonna put it in everything. And a lot of countries don't want that for their people because they see what it does, what it does to people that do this and they actually care, which is why I'm working on that video for you guys on how food and mental illnesses are linked and all that we talked about it in our previous videos. And you should see how many stuff are banned in other countries, like preservatives and fillers and food that are banned in those countries, but are okay in the United States. And I'm like, they don't care about us. They don't care about us. You gotta care about yourself. Okay, like even on YouTube, they're still not taking down naked yoga. Did you see how they don't care, even entities like YouTube? But they don't want people talking about this. They don't want to, you know, upset. They, I feel like every person in power, every big brand, big company have this agenda. They're all the same. I honestly, I know I'm gonna sound paranoid and like a conspiracy theorist, but it's not far-fetched that I really think a lot of people in industries, corporations that own things are actual demons in human form. And that's why they don't seem to care. And that's why they suppress knowledge and things that will make the people change. They're literal demons. A lot of performers, artists, y'all want to know why they're not changing, why they're still doing this. They hear the people complaining against it because they're demons in literal form. A lot of us are listening to demons, watching demons. Because there are angels that come in human form. The Bible said we entertain angels all the time. And this world, this is where Lucifer and all his fallen angels came down to. So this world is his. Don't think he don't have a hand in all of these things. So you're, this is what you're fighting up against. Give yourself some grace. Give yourself some patience. It took me a long time. I, I was introduced to corn at, what, six years old, almost seven. And... I was in my 20s, like literally like 22, 23, okay, 24, <laughs> when I finally was like, okay, I'm walking away from this. That's how long it took me. And I thought God would just be done with me. God would just, but it's like, yo, we're fighting up against the ruler of this earth who's been here for billions and billions of years for a very long time, you know? who knows and understands the psyche of us humans so much and understands subliminal messages, all this stuff, and influences people to influence us. Like, we won't stand a chance if we're not guarded every day, we're not prayerful, and we keep making this stuff look like conspiracy. We keep making this stuff look like people are tripping, tripping or reaching. Where are we gonna progress that? Just cause it's, it's people you like. So yeah, this topic was on my heart since that video and I didn't even know which angle I was going to take. But one thing I knew for sure and two things for certain is that I don't want no one to think that because you have a history of this, you've done some stuff or even if you're a girl when you were young, you, you know, was exploring a lot. You didn't know better. Give yourself some grace. Okay. Forgive yourself. Because if you keep, if you never forgive yourself, you're not going to believe or understand just how deep God's grace go. It wasn't until I forgave myself for a lot of stuff could I understand God's grace. And then it makes it easier for me to forgive others. But a lot of us ask God for forgiveness, but we're not forgiving ourselves. 
Give yourself grace for what you did not know. When you were young, even as an adult, we're still ignorant. That When I'm 40, I'm probably gonna look back at this age and be like, oh my God, there's so much you didn't know. This is why I love when older people comment on my videos, when older people reach out to me. I love listening to them because I'm like, the wisdom, this is why we should respect our elders. They live through it. They tell us we don't understand until we get older and we look at everything like they're dumb, they're idiots. I'm telling you from experience, I wish Oh man, if I knew better, I would take the advice of all those who came before me. And I can't wait till I'm get. I'm excited to grow older. What will I learn now? How will my mind change? How will I look when I revisit ideologies that I have? So give yourself grace and understand as you grow, you're going to learn and things are going to change. I can do a part two on the science of what corn does to your brain probably a voiceover since it'll be more research based if you guys comment below that you guys want that video i can do that for y'all this week because this topic is so important and i do want to dive into it a little bit more i love you guys though so much thank you for tuning in comment any questions you have your experience advice whatever i love it all if you love the music you're listening to in the background always support my brother make sure you share this video with someone thumbs up i love you guys until next time Mwah.